Hello again. Welcome back to the Dahlia Society. My name is Kristen and today I'm going to talk to you about the things that I made in March and I'm going to also talk about what I'm wearing today. Well March started off as a busy month and it got even more productive towards the end because of our whole social isolation. It has really kick-started me into sewing my autumn winter looks um, and getting a lot of inspiration for what to make for the next coming month. So I've got plenty to show you on the sewing front. Before I get started on that, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, what about clicking the notification bell and clicking on the subscribe button down below and that way you'll be kept up to date with my newest episodes which are released once to twice a week. Another thing I wanna say is a huge thank you to all the positive comments Everyone in this community has been fantastic, especially the last couple of weeks with, with everything going on in the world. I think it's really connected us and unified us as creators more than ever. And also it makes you feel that you're not alone in the world. We are really all in this together and we are, can really inspire each other. And I think it's fantastic. Thank you also to the wonderful people who have donated to my coffee account. Now in the current financial climate, I know that is a huge ask for people to donate, uh, especially when people are, a lot of people are out of work and have lost their jobs. I really, really appreciate any donation I get that goes straight back into my channel. So I just wanted to really say how thankful I am and how much I appreciate that. And I'm trying to bring you more and more content. In a previous episode, I had talked about the whole uh, obsession my daughter, my youngest daughter Lily has with the whole Stranger Things fashion and how much inspiration has come from watching that and seeing all the 80s fashion come back. One of my wonderful subscribers from Florida, Stacey Roberts, has actually found a pattern that was in storage in her mother's, um, all her mother's old vintage pattern she kept from the 80s. And she actually found this amazing simplicity jumpsuit pattern. I will give you guys a look. So it's an authentic 80s pattern that Stacy had actually worn herself and loved and she had um, posted me this all the way from from Florida here to Melbourne Australia and I'd received it in the in the post with a lovely letter that Stacy had written so I want to say a huge thank you uh, for this pattern and I will be definitely making this for Lily um, it's all the instructions are there it's all in fantastic order but I just think that's going to come up really really lovely with some bright vibrant fabric even a pin cord I think it says on here you could make for autumn winter so I'm really dying to get this made for her and um see how fantastic she looks in it so thank you for that Stacey much appreciated another exciting thing coming up I wanted to let you guys all know about is the whole virtual cocktails hashtag that's come out on Instagram just recently and because of a lot of the frocktails events that had been cancelled they decided to do a whole online virtual cocktails night which is the 4th of April um, and that you're welcome to um Put yourself out there with your um, finest cocktail gown and your your favorite cocktail drink yeah and if you don't drink it you can make a maybe a mocktail or even a tea and coffee so something. i think it'd be fantastic to make this an event and i've decided to do a live stream on instagram for next saturday which is the 4th of april and that is australian easter daylight savings time that will be one o'clock here in Melbourne time next Saturday, 4th of April. So for you guys in the US, um, I know I've got a lot of subscribers at the moment that are watching from um, California and from Texas and from Florida. So that would be um, heading on to, into the evening for you guys. So I hope you can all join me. And for a lot of my UK and uh, the rest of Europe, um, this probably won't coincide very well. With it's you really hard trying to find a time zone for everyone to join in. And I know it's, it's leaving a lot of you guys out. Um, don't forget you can always join in later on and it will also be there for you guys to watch uh, later on in the day when or whenever it suits you so if you're there and you see me online please jump onto Instagram if you don't already follow me on Instagram pop over to the Dahlia Society uh, I'll put a link for that in my under my description here so you guys can um, join my Instagram and that way you'll be alerted when it comes up as a live stream so get the cocktails ready get your favorite recipes ready um, I, I know if you're a keen gin drinker or vodka drinker maybe espresso martini um people are talking about this whole quarantini cocktail that's coming which is probably really poor taste but it's actually look at if it lightens the mood i think it's fantastic so yeah pop pop on your most favorite me made cocktail frock and if you don't have that look even pop on your pajamas it really doesn't matter as long as you're joining in the fun and we are all um getting together as a community to to show each other our makes so that's hashtag virtual frock tales and that's the 4th of april and that would be 
as I say, in Australia, that would be you guys in the, the US are a good 16 to 18 hours behind us. So that would be the Friday night, the 3rd of April for you guys. Now, a lot of the, uh, the subscribers I have in the UK and over in Europe, that could be very early morning for you guys. So I'm not expecting you guys to get your cocktails out. But look, if you get a morning coffee or a cup of tea and or an orange juice, yeah, please, please join so you're us. You're talking about much, getting back to our meme maids. You will see I have not let that pattern beat me. I know I talked about the Marilla Walker Roberts jumpsuit that I'd made a my first version of and I had totally butchered it. Um, I found that the crotch was too long. So the next one I made, I decided to do a few little tweaks and I'd message Marilla to ask her what she thought and she said, yep, definitely go ahead. Um, you'll notice on the pattern it has the, the crotch lengthen or the rise lengthen or shorten. I took an inch out of that. Now my first Marilla Walker Roberts jumpsuit was a slight disaster I had to modify it quite a bit to get it to fit me because I had actually had it way too big I made a size six and I found it to be like just gigantic because mainly because the crotch was a bit too low now you'll see it's got a, a lot of really um, unique stitching details and the way the lines of the garment it's a very interesting design so when you make something like this and then you go and try and alter it you really have to watch that you don't detract from the design of the garment that's exactly what I did by shortening the uh, at the waistline I really made a big mistake there because you do need to shorten the length in from from the rise of the pant and not the waistline otherwise you're going to take away that whole drop waisted effect so although I got it um, wearable um, I'm not as happy with that one as I am with the one I have on now this was a lightweight chambray denim in the leopard print and you'll see I had to then uh, remove the pockets and the waist is more of a higher rise waist um, so I got it wearable but it probably would be something I'll wear in the house only because I'm not really that wrapped with the whole styling of it um, but love the fabric so it's, it's a real a shame if you make something up in the fabric and you just wing it and then you realize you probably should have made a muslin first and got the whole fit of the garment right before you use that nice fabric but we live and learn don't we so i'll pop some pictures up of this one so you can see exactly what i mean now the one i've got on today was made from the cotton sateen and i'm thrilled with the way that the fabric has taken to the pattern because because it's got that slight stretch in it, you'll find that when you're moving around in it, it's it's really comfortable to wear. But being cotton sateen, it's not too much stretch because it really does call for a mid to lightweight a chambray denim um, cotton. Um, so I was slightly concerned. I'd already made one. I knew what to expect with the fit of the garment. So I was really happy with my fabric choice. So I'll stand back and give you guys a little look at it. Um, and I'll put some video as well for you guys to see. It's the most comfortable thing to wear. It really does feel like you're in your pajamas. Um, and I love Marilla's patterns. They are always thoughtfully um, drafted as far as comfort, but unique styling as well. So yeah, get onto her website and have a look at her bundle packages of um, patterns. They're great value for money as well. And this one as well, it can be made in a long sleeve long or short and the overall styling pattern comes in this packet as so well it's a pinafore style dress in two different lengths and, a, and the also the bib and brace style overalls as well it almost feels like you're in a onesie but you're in a little bit of a dressier one i'm really happy with the construction of the garment i love the fit of the bodice so i went down to a size five really happy i did that i wouldn't want to go any smaller i think yeah, on, i was on the edge of the five to six but because i'd already made one and i saw there was quite a lot of ease in it especially around the middle i think a five was perfect for me so i'm a 14 australian um or that's the uk as well so 14 verging on 16 in some things so i found that the size five and this was perfect for me but please take your measurements and also look at your um finished measurements of your garment that way you get a really accurate idea of the way it's going to come up um, and it has got as I say a drop waist which is quite unusual I don't know I haven't really made anything with with this style of waist before but you really need to have that room in the crotch area where the pockets are especially when you're going to the toilet and you want to be taking this on and off you need to have that extra excess room so really really happy with this um, pattern. Now, earlier on in the month, I did a, a fantastic collaboration with Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles, and I felt very privileged to be working with her because I know she has a huge fan base and she has so many uh, tutorials and videos for you, you guys to watch. And a lot of um, the subscribers from her channel came over to visit me from there. So I want to say thank you to her for allowing me to do that, that collab. And as I say, you can learn a lot from watching Karina's channel. She's just... Uh, 
she's really got the the expertise there especially with garment fitting and getting things to look perfect on you the dress we made was the Heidi Day dress from an Australian designer and you'll see here that we actually did two different versions I did the version more like a pinafore style in a quilting cotton and she did her version in a couple of different more lightweight um, printed rayons uh, and a, a cotton round as well I think she did so her looked gorgeous so we're really happy with the way they turned out and I think Karina changed quite a bit of her fitting with her darts around I just left mine as is but I think they are definitely made for more of a D cup um, maybe even up I think if you have a smaller than a D cup bust you might need to do a uh, an adjustment on the bust area because they're quite deep darts they had the ties that were fitted into the back and that wrapped around the front and I know Karina actually changed her ties around and she went from the front to the back and that looked perfect as well definitely look into the Heidi Day dress from wearable studio here in Australia another one of my favorite makes for the month was the Pietra pants that I made from closet case studios I had a lot of um, wonderful feedback on these pants and I think a lot of people had actually had this pattern that they'd bought and not made it yet so hopefully I inspired some people to get get it out and make it because it's a fantastic pant pattern with a beautiful like sculpted high waist and that elastic back which I really think a lot of people love the uh, the look and the feel of those style of pants on so I made that, those in a, a lovely deep um, green linen from Linkraft nice sort of sturdy weight linen as well those so yeah really happy with the way they turned out and I want to make um, a few more pairs of those in the narrow leg for winter I think you could wear them even like as a jean I think if you use a lightweight denim I think you could um, get it, get away with those as like a jean style so really happy with those and I also made in that same episode, which I'll link all the episodes below so you guys can go back and look through those if you haven't caught up on them already. Um, I made a very popular, well, the most popular pattern from Friday Pattern Company is their wild gown dress. Now, I was listening to um, Chelsea on the Love to Sew podcast and she was talking about the amazing response they had to the Wilder gown. I think it's their best selling pattern yet. Now, just saying that the response had been amazing. I'd heard a lot of people saying that they loved the pattern but just didn't feel it suited them. And same with me, I felt that when I had it done up, I felt a bit claustrophobic and I just didn't think it was my aesthetic. I think it always looks beautiful on a lovely, tall, thin model with a long neck, um, like an elegant style blouse if you're going to wear it done up. Um, it's a really personal thing. Some people will say basically you can wear whatever you want, whatever size you, you are, which is very true, but also depends on what your look, what your aesthetic is and what you feel comfortable in. For me, I felt that I just it was just too much fabric around my neck um, with the volume of the ties. So a lot of people had written what they thought might work best. A lot of people had said they liked it better open, which I agree, I liked it better open on myself. Some people had said that they'd taken the tie out and used elastic around the back to get that gathered a fit without the bulk. Other people had said that they'd replaced the fabric tie with a ribbon or even done half the thickness of the tie so you didn't have quite that much volume at the neckline. But there are a lot of people that love that whole pussy bow blouse, um, you know, like bow hanging at the neck. So it really is a personal thing. I think people, um, you can make your own mind up with, with what you like and what suits you and what you will wear. But definitely I probably would say next time I've ever made it, I would try the whole elastic um, version of the neckline or even the lighter skinnier tie because I really enjoy wearing it I just feel that it's um it's not the roomiest make around the middle it has got quite a lot of room because the raglan sleeve blouse um, that gives you quite a lot of room in the shoulder but when you get down to the middle area you find it comes in a little bit there and it isn't that large so be very careful with this sizing and always look at your finish size measurements on that too so next time if I made it again I would probably would widen to a 16 around the middle and I'd keep the 14 up top so um, you might have to do a bit of pattern grading on that yourself to get the right fit another recent episode I put out was the sew to grow port city pants so I did a little bit of a pattern review on those and that was in those slub um, denim like a tensile or a lightweight denim chambray and that was, I was very happy with the comfort and ease of wearing of those patterns as well. So I will link that episode there for you to have a look at. Lindsay Ray, who is the face of Sew to Grow, she actually is from Texas and she lives in Queensland in Australia now. So I think it's fantastic to support a lot of Australian sewing companies. And she's just the loveliest person on Instagram. You'll see she does quite a lot of tutorials and a lot of um, live sews for you to follow along with as well. So um, 
definitely pop over to her website and it's, as I say, fantastic pant, comfortable pant pattern as well. March was an extremely busy month for me because I had my whole t-shirt free pattern series happening. So I had about four episodes with all free patterns that I'd tried and tested. One in particular that I actually had made that I didn't do in my episodes was the Toronto Tea by Rebecca Page. Now the Toronto Tea, I know um, that Alyssa Shea from Thoughtful Creativity had done an episode on herself. So I decided not to bother putting that out for you guys because she did a very thorough and detailed episode on that. The Toronto tea, I actually had some of this fabric in my stash that I had used to make my daughter a dress um, a couple of years ago and I just thought it was a really cute uh, cotton interlock jersey with the little um, umbrellas on it. Nice bright little t-shirt with the grey background and that I just used for wearing to do like things like yoga or just walking the dog. It's not something, the pattern itself I found was fine. It just wasn't the type of t-shirt. I usually go for something with a little bit more shaping and it's more of a boyfriend style, um, boxy style t-shirt. So that's the Toronto. Now most of these I've already showed you guys in previous episodes, but that was the Frankie tee I made from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. And that's a great, fantastic, easy, comfortable top to wear as well. And the Mama Bear Joggers from Pattern for Pirates. That's another one of my favorite um, sweatpants styles. And you can see the patch pockets on the front of those. Um, they're really comfortable to wear and can be made up in lots of different weights of jersey fabrics as well. So they were, they've been worn quite a bit already this month. And the last things I have to show you were from my other t-shirt, free t-shirt pattern episodes. This one was the Ab Tea by D-I-B-Y. And that was in a Ponty. And that was other stash fabric I had left over as well. So as I say, that's the sort of thing I will wear in the house with sweatpants. And it's a, it's quite a shaped t-shirt pattern with a lower scoop neck. Now, these two tops were other free patterns and I had really good responses, especially from the fabric. A lot of um, you guys have gone on and bought and told me you bought the fabric from seeing these from Spotlight. And when you link a fabric underneath the description, it's fantastic for viewers to go ahead and uh, order that fabric online, especially at the moment because a lot of the, the shops are still closed. And online the, ordering is the way to go. So um, a rayon spandex in the most gorgeous autumnal print, um, my, all of my favorite colors there. And a lot of people had commented how much they love that fabric on me. I just think it's vibrant and colorful and also a bit more um, with the autumnal subdued colors. But as I say, anything with a black, background with floral it really pops out to me um, it's always one of my favorites so I've worn that quite a bit already and the other fabric was from uh, spotlight as well was the the navy and claret print and that one was the free t-shirt pattern the uh, page pico from made for mermaid patterns um, these sort of things are great because you've got the ease of wearing like a t-shirt it's not a fitted t-shirt but it's also not that baggy that you couldn't wear it underneath like a layering like a cardigan or a pinafore but it's got enough drape in it that you can wear over the top of pants or jeans so it's a it's a fantastic pattern i'll definitely be making more of those and a great neckline it's sometimes it's great to have a neckline that's not too high and not too scooped so that you can wear it more for all seasons so that was my march makes so i hope you enjoyed that um, if you have any comments, I welcome those below. Please feel free to comment on any of those things you've seen or any questions you may have regarding any of the patterns. I'll try to link every single pattern below so you guys can pop over and order those if need be or even the fabric as well. And don't forget to pop over to my Instagram for next Saturday, 4th of April, or that'll be the 3rd of April for you guys um, in the Northern Hemisphere. Join me for a virtual Frocktails night and with a cocktail, I think it would be fantastic fun. Uh, it's just what we need at the moment. Also, I'm looking forward to bringing you that new series, that So Comfy series, because as I say, we're all home, we're wanting to sew. We are dreaming of sewing our beautiful things to wear. And when just, not, as I say, not sure when, uh, when we'll be able to get out and about and show off those gorgeous uh, fabrics that we've all um, stashed up but I think that if we concentrate on sewing things that we will definitely wear day to day at the moment which is fantastic think about the comfiest things that you love to wear I'm going to try and think of the things that I love to wear the most and what I enjoy wearing around the house that still make me feel nice so I've got a lot in store there for you and I'm even looking at the, the whole sleepwear side of patterns I think is really important some people are just enjoying being in their pajamas at the moment which is a fantastic way to take advantage of that because how often do we get the opportunity to stay in our pajamas all day if that's what we wish and then you know, you've got no visitors coming and you're not going out anywhere so really if you want to make yourself a beautiful pair of loungewear pajamas i think this is a great opportunity to do that as well so i'm going to try and find my favorite patterns and bring them to you guys 
Thank you again for watching. If you have enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up because that really helps my channel. Thank you guys for watching for your beautiful comments and I will hopefully see you very shortly with a newest episode. Bye for now.